B Rising 1.0 Hotfix number 9. Rising from our crypts once more to bring you a heavier hotfix. Today's patch includes a massive triple digit grab bag of general UI and bug fixes, as well as a hefty dose of game balance adjustments. We highly recommend restarting the game to ensure you get the latest version. This update brings the following fixes. General fixes. Increased the strength of haptic feedback by 60%. Huh, okay. UI fixes. Fixed stuttering that can occur when scrolling through the player list on servers with a lot of players. Fixed stuttering that can occur when using the map with a gamepad. Fixed an issue where the selection options would extend outside of the screen space in the social menu on servers with a lot of players. Made it easier to see which server rule set is selected in the game settings rule set tab fix an issue where players could get an inconsistent ordering of clan mates in the hud fix an issue where players would sometimes not show in the clan hud i've seen that that's happened to me i've had this problem fix an issue where tooltips on weapons would show incorrect information after the weapon had been unequipped when playing on a gamepad the host game and join game buttons are no longer visible when reading the server info in the server list. Added gamepad UI optimizations. Okay. Fixed issues with scrolling in the merchant UI while using a gamepad. Fix some layout issues in the castle heart menus when using a gamepad. Fix an issue where the vampire powers menu would forget what a bear is when playing with a gamepad. Don't ask. You can't write don't ask and not expect me to ask what the heck is this about? <laughs> the emote wheel is no longer displayed as empty when riding a horse. I never noticed that actually. I never tried to emote while riding a horse. It's kind of weird. Improvements were made to the feel of the V Blood menu when playing on a gamepad. Fixed a rare range exception error that could occur when using a gamepad in the build menu. Fixed UI issues that would occur when playing with HDR enabled. Optimized the performance of health bars. Fixed the selector being stupid and not showing the last items in the character creation menu if the selector was placed in a row with no additional items. What? <laughs> okay. Fix the sun is rising text getting stuck on the screen when teleporting to Dracula's throne room. I didn't even know that was a bug. Wow. Fix an issue where the difficulty filter could not be selected with a gamepad in the dedicated server list. Hmm. Okay. Bug fixes. Prevented accidental double taps when opening the map with a gamepad. This stops the map from opening then immediately closing. Fixed issue where adaptive triggers would stop camera input when playing with controller layout 2. Fixed an issue where the navigation could break when swapping between the social menu and the systems menu with a gamepad. Fixed an issue where navigation would become unresponsive when pressing the D-pad when editing settings with a value point, made the tutorial system more optimized to help lower end systems. System messages no longer display two timestamps. You know, I have noticed that and I always wondered why. <laughs> the brightness slider on first startup is no longer affected by frame rate issues. Fixed a bug where the client would use the next parameter if provided with an empty value for save file name. Fix some issues with the pathfinding for the map marker guidance that would lead players down the wrong roads. Holy shit, that's scary. Fix an issue. <laughs> Fix an issue where options were not properly saved if an autosave was occurring just as the option was changed. Fix an issue where the aim previews for the greatsword would sometimes lock up. Pressing escape no longer closes the whole private game setup when trying to deselect a text input field. Fix the missing walk animation for the vampire cultist when the unit is engaged in combat. It was a missing walk animation? I didn't notice that. 
I've hit the vampire cult. Wait, hold on. Oh, the vampire cultists. I thought they meant the shopkeepers. Okay, that well, all right, that's interesting. Fix the aim preview for ice block to work properly when targeting allied players. Fixed a performance issue with the bombs from the Gatlers and Zappers. Improved performance for the lightning strikes in Gloomrot and North Gloomrot. Okay, this is huge because whenever I play on a server with a lot of people and a lot of castles, and I go to North Gloomrot, the lag is so bad. It's so bad. These fixes for P both PC and PlayStation. I believe this is just the PC version patch notes. Um, if there are PlayStation, uh, yeah, well, actually, it's a good question. It's a good question. Let me quickly. I think these are just. I want to say that this is PC only because this set of patch notes I grabbed from Steam. So I want to say it's PC only. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be fixes for PlayStation or if these apply. So I, I'm sure they have different issues. I mean, I don't have the, the PS5 version, so I, I wouldn't know. But my suspicion is that this is just the PC version. Um, all right. Improved performance of AI units to make the game run smoother. Improved performance of bushes. Sentry officer servants now bring their turrets with them when going on a mission. <laughs> yeah, that was always weird. Optimize the occlusion culling for animators. Uh, servants now properly find their way home after mission, even if the castle was relocated while they were away. Oh, wow. I never even considered that as a potential problem. Spells can now be properly thrown through archways and hedges. Wait. Oh. Oh, that's nice. That's huge. This is actually big for PvP because if you think about it, uh, I think right now all you can do is throw projectiles through like a window, but I don't think that you can you can do that with the um, hedges. Like, you know, the hedges with the... Uh, the archways or like with the like circle and I think that's what they're talking about here. So that's kind of that's kind of a big deal for outside combat. But I, I uh, wow, that's that's interesting. Fix some clipping issues for vampires with long hair. Nice. That's that's really appreciated. Um, updated the visual effect on the EMP bomb explosion to be more performant. OK. Uh, improve the performance of several frost and storm spells and abilities. Improve the performance of the slasher's elusive strike. Fix performance issues with Meredith the Bright Archer's abilities. Fix performance issues with Quincy the Bandit King's abilities. Fix performance issues with Matka the Curse Weaver's abilities. Fix performance issues with Terraclaw the Ogre's abilities. Yeah, I had some problems with Terraclaw. Um, I'm not surprised this is on here. Uh, improved how the game handles LODs to improve performance. I don't know what LODs are off the top of my head. I'm trying to think, like, what does that stand for? If someone can tell me in the chat, that'd be great. Improve the performance of rendering characters. Carriages no longer sometimes leave their colliders behind after being despawned. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, player characters can no longer move through collision when already in collision and spell controlled. Timers on buffs now properly update the time formatting when changing language. Text on the arrow waypoint now updates when changing language. Fix the problem where the animator would be activated when the unit is in ragdoll state. Wow. Fixed vampire sorry the vampire no longer sometimes turns white when dashing through lightning beams fix a number of bugs which could make parts of the vampire turn invisible when dashing to exit a shapeshift fixed a crash that could occur when visual effect materials were incorrectly destroyed fix for ledge jumping with bat form what? Ledge jumping with bat form? What does that mean? Did they like get rid of like 
I'm, I'm gonna have to ask uh this might be a question for timmy he might know something about this i might have to ask him what he thinks about this chess boards now have correct layout of black and white squares fix a bug where cooldown reduction on equipped jewels lost their effect on server start until the jewel was re-equipped holy shit that's huge fix an issue of not being able to set an empty value for auto save smart keep via the command line parameter negative save smart keep by now allowing a value of dash all right let me see with the chat that's great bush's optimization yeah right <laughs> are these performance issues nerfs or buffs for these bosses i don't think it's a nerf or buff i think that it just caused like it wouldn't the thing is they say performance issues but they don't specify what issues specifically i assume it's probably lag related but i'm not sure uh it doesn't really specify here i don't think these are buffs or nerfs at all though as far as performance issues the only buffs or nerfs i'm seeing on here are to the the hedges how now you can throw spells through hedges and shit like that's a buff no. <laughs> for for the person attacking that is um how can you jump in bat form yeah that's what i'm trying to figure out because i'm wondering if i don't know i i'm guessing there was some weird bug or something like that so i i feel like i'm not, i'm gonna have to ask around for that one um i've never heard of that so that's news to me that, that's a good question <laughs> all right balance updates here we go this is the section you've all been waiting for while we were looking at changes to make for this balance update we reached out in a few public and private discords to get some community feedback on the most pressing issues related to pvp in the game right now to get the best idea what we could do to alleviate current frustrations with that in mind we've changed uh, sorry with that in mind the changes we're making are restricted to numbers adjustments to spells that needed a little tuning down like the defensive counters and buffs but just as importantly some others that need a little boost to help make more options viable okay hope these changes appease the pvp peeps if only for a while i mean it's hard to appease pvp just because there's always going to be someone out there who finds an, a way to exploit a new system or something that's been changed so it's like um i know for a i want to say for a previous interview i want to say the one when i when i did it with like grim xv and ash and um you know the v arena peeps i think for like a previous interview if i remember correctly during the one one of the pvp questions they asked jeremy about like uh you know pvp balancing or something like that and i think if i remember correctly i i, I vaguely remember him mentioning something about how like players are never going to play the game the way you think they will or the way that you want them to they're always going to find like some kind of loophole or and it's absolutely true so i i really i don't have high hopes but i also don't play pvp so we will read it anyway just to well i guess i have tasted pvp i have gotten a little bit of um i, I i've enjoyed the taste of blood briefly so see balancing is always going to be tricky yeah it definitely is all right, so let's see. Let's see what they did. <clears throat> uh, some motivations for changes are as follows. We received a lot of feedback that the whip is too strong due to its attack speed and overall damage compared to other weapons that are harder to aim. Even though the whip overall has the lowest DPS damage per second, we increased the primary attack's cast time to make it slightly more reactable while also lowering the DPS. This will bring it more in line with other weapons. I hope they didn't over nerf it. That, that's my first thought reading this. Uh, we will see. <clears throat> in general, defenses have been oppressive. We turned down the sorry, we've tuned down the numbers in some of the shields and defensives provided. There are other issues with strengths on defensives that can't that can't solved that can't be solved with a simple numbers adjustment, but this will have to do for now. 
Okay. Void is omnipresent in raiding when combined with scholar blood, having a large radius that's difficult not to get value out of in narrow hallways when used excessively by many vampires at once. We've reduced the radius to make it a bit easier to dodge and a bit harder to get value out of them when used in large groups. That's fair. That, I agree. Void was out of control. Yeah, Void, Void is out of control. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, even when I played um, uh, briefly, like, some PvP, I already saw Void was, like, out of control. Like, it was so bad, even I started using Void. Because I was like, well, as much as I like, you know, uh, Bone Explosion, why should I use Bone Explosion when I can use Void and lock my, you know, lock the person in place? You know, you get more value out of it just for the CC and for the... I mean, it's hard to dodge. It's like, anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you on that. All right, let's see. Many projectiles and targeting offensive abilities have had their damage tuned up to make them more competitive options compared to defensive spells. Okay. Uh, there's been some rebalancing in the Frost School, offsetting some of the frustrating nature of the freeze setups by increasing the shield uh increasing the shielding the freeze gives a player which should soften the blow of the first guaranteed hit they receive when being broken out of their frozen state hmm. some underutilized ults have gotten some buffs okay well that's not very specific but that but this is just the um explanation of their thought process through that so let's read through what they actually did right now we're starting to work on the next update and in that we're going to be able to do more of the things we weren't able to do now for instance we're aware there are concerns in pvp around how much offensive utility directional shields have but there's no way to adjust them properly without changing their functionality significantly which we're restricted from doing in a minor patch such as this we're also working on some fun systems that you can look forward to that have uh, that are targeted at PvP lovers, like the much requested dual system. Oh, let's go! Dual system, yeah. Uh, let's see. Weapons, whip, increase cast time of the primary attack to 0 0.5 seconds from 0 0.45 seconds, and tweaked movement speed on cast. All right, blood, blood fountain, increase damage done from 75% to 90%, reduced cast time from 0 0.5 seconds to 0 0.4 seconds. Crimson beam, increased damage from 250% to 275%. Oh, thank God, because crimson beam, it's really, so I used crimson beam in PVP. It's really nice when you're like, you know, when you, especially when you hit like multiple targets, it's like such a great return on investment, but the ability for people to like attack you while you're channeling that is so risky to pop it out. It's so risky. Like you got to choose the right moment or you can just die. Uh, <laughs> so I'm glad they're, they're making it worthwhile. I don't know if the damage done increase makes sense, but, um, that's cool. Blood Rage. Jewel, reduce spell mod shield from 40 to 60% to 30 to 45%. Jewel, reduce... Uh, this is for Blood Rage, by the way. Reduce shield duration from 4 seconds to 3 seconds. Okay, yeah, I think the jewels were a little strong, so I guess that's fair. Blood Rage isn't, like, used by everyone, especially if you're using, like, a slow auto... Um, uh like if you're using like a great sword or something like that that has like slow auto attacks yeah everyone's using that um let's see chaos aftershock increased damage done from 130 percent to 140 percent void reduce radius from 3.2 to 2.2 jewel Reduce cluster bomb radius from 2.2 to 1.6. Okay. Reduce time to impact from 1 second to 0 0.8 seconds. Reduce knockback distance towards center from 2 to 1. 
Uh, let me read the chat real quick. I think these changes mainly nerf the defensive spells, enhance the range spells, and reduce effectivity of some AoE damage spells. Yeah, it sounds about right. Because here's the thing. Going double d defense was like a very viable option because think about it if you're if you're not having to worry about aiming any spells and you're just you know defending through um oh man i can't remember the name of the lightning um i can't i think the strongest ones were cold snap and the lightning one the lightning uh shield block and then also the frontal aoe um ice ones like the ice ones were kind of strong like so i don't know <laughs> we will see unholy unholy skeleton summons drastically reduced dynamic collision size against players uh improved accuracy of skeleton apprentices projectile uh cast nice that's a nice buff i would say if you're reducing the dynamic collision size i mean that's big that's actually a nice uh buff Play is like def want. Hold on. Play is like def def wait for enemy to cluster, then free ult. Yep. Freeze AOE ult one after another. Yep. One cold snap and then everything dies. Like it's literally. <laughs> like all you do is land one cold snap and you can do a full combo almost if you know what you're doing. It's like it's. Or actually, I shouldn't even say almost. That was the case. Depending on what weapons you're using, your setup. I mean busted busted completely busted illusion changes to jewels spawning wisps jewel increased speed of wisps oh nice wait so we got a new wait is this a new jewel or is this given to a jewel i don't know i wish they named the jewels instead of just saying jewel um let's see reduced lifetime of wisp from 22 seconds to 10 seconds Oh, okay. Reduced healing from each spell mod wisp from 30 to 60 to 30 to 50 percent. Hmm. Wisp dance. Increased recast projectile damage done from 100 percent to 110 percent. Spectral wolf. Jewel. Increase the number of bonus bounces from one to a range of one to two. That's interesting. Mosquito. Increased damage done from 100 percent to 120 percent. Jewel, change spell mod wisp move pattern to shoot out from the center a bit stronger to make it harder to quickly catch all three wisps. Oh, that's nice. Made players only capture one wisp from hugging the mosquito as it explodes. Interesting. Uh, Wraith Spear, reduce cast time from 1 seconds to 0 0.8 seconds. Yay, <laughs> that's nice. Reduce travel distance from uh, five to four units. Also, that's that's fine. Reduce damage from 170% to 160%. Canceling the cast now sets the cooldown to 50% of full cooldown. Hmm, that's interesting. Phantom Aegis. Reduce shield absorb value from 200% to 180%. Well, I, I think that's pretty fair. Phantom Aegis was kind of strong. Uh, let's see. Frost. Uh, these are the changes I really want to see. Um, all right, here we go. General. Increase absorb value from 50% to 65% of the frost freeze buff. Ice Nova. Jewel. Increase damage done to chilled and frozen targets from 25 to 40% to 35 to 50%. Okay. Uh, Crystal Lance. Jewel. Increase damage done to chilled and frozen targets from 30% to 60% to 40% to 70%. Okay. Frostbat. Increase damage done from 110% to 115%. Jewel. Increased impact blast area damage from 20 to 40 percent to 40 to 60 percent. Bug fix fixed impact blast effect size to better match hitbox. Okay. Cold snap reduce shield absorb value from 100 percent to 80 percent. Woo! That's white. That's a nice ass nerf. Let's see. Reduce freeze duration from 2.5 seconds to two seconds. 1.25 seconds to one seconds versus players. 
so it's different versus players. That's interesting. Okay. Veil of Frost. The jewel perk now applies a three second freeze down from four seconds. Two seconds to 1.5 seconds versus players. Ice block. Now shields for 500% of your spell power up from 450%. Now shields 150% initial magic damage up from 100%. Arctic Leap now deals 225% magic damage up from 200. Ooh, so Arctic Leap gets a, a nice little buff there. Storm, Polarity Shift, Jewel, Increase Damage of Travel Start and Travel End Lightning Nova triggers from 25% to 50% to 40% to 60%. Okay. Ball Lightning, Jewel, Increase Detonate Early Spell Mod Damage from 25% to 50% to 40% to 80%. Lightning Curtain. Increase damage dealt per tick from 25% to 30%. Uh, Jewel. Reduce shield gain by passing through the wall from 40% to 60% to 30% to 50%. Lightning Typhoon. Now gain 125% fading haste up from 100%. Now occurs over a duration of 4 seconds up from 3.5 seconds. Oh, that was it. That was it.